We are told there is closure, that loss and grief ultimately lead to acceptance. But closure can be complicated. In this story, it has built for decades for a family waiting for its angel to come home. It's almost like you're living in a daze. You haven't come out of it yet. She had distinctive eyes. Cheryl Hammock grew up in Thomaston, Georgia. This one? Her sisters, Lynn and Johnny, and her mother, Kathleen, speak of a family that dressed alike and a wild child who led the way. She had this crazy dance. She danced and shook everything from head to toe. These are the last ones we have of her. The fall of 1981 brought to town a touring fair. 18-year-old Cheryl decided to join it to earn some money to see the country. My last memory of her was just with her little brown paper sack walking down the road, wanting to meet her friends to go to the fair, to leave. That was it. Three weeks later, Cheryl stopped calling. Four weeks later, her family received a package with her belongings. No word, not for days, weeks, months, years. Their cases resembled hers. I would call in and those leads would never go anywhere. It was easier thinking that she was dead rather than homeless somewhere, starving, being captured by someone and not being able to go free. It was the easiest way of getting through life. Cheryl's family lived in limbo for 37 years. And then, a post from a woman they'd never met. That's one of my main interests, is the John and Jane Doe cases. Kelly Sage lives in Wyoming, but she grew up in Quitman, Georgia. A few years back, she visited the grave of a well-known Jane Doe. Somebody had um, etched her likeness in her gravestone. In Quitman, the story is lore. A body found near a highway, stabbed and strangled. The body went unclaimed and was buried with the words, known only to God. I was like, you know, you deserve better than that. You're a person, so sorry. <laughs> so she was, she's a person, you know, and she had her, she had her dreams and her hopes and, you know, this terrible person took that away from her. My sister's height, she had her hazel eyes, she had the same hair color, she had the same scarring on her knee. We never gave up hope. We know the, the uh, identity now. The GBI announced its discovery in January. We had some good times. Now it's July. And y'all have smiles on your face. And Cheryl is almost oh home. I might sleep one night, good night, then that'd be three or four nights, I won't sleep none. I have a little boy that looks just like him. just reality. It's finally here and I don't know that we're prepared. One more day, one more time. Two weeks later, the child known only to God returns to those who knew her best. I don't know if anybody here really understands how something so brutal and awful can happen to someone. Thank you for not giving up hope and being relentless. Today, Cheryl Hammock sits in an unfinished plot in Thomaston, a family's angel at last coming home. Does it feel like there's closure now? Not really. It still, still hasn't quite sunk in. <laughs> it took almost 40 years to get here. I don't know how many it'll take to get past this.